back everybody. I um, want to take the time to thank everybody who's entered my giveaway. If you haven't done so, check out my channel. Um, I've got a giveaway going until the end of March. I'll do the drawing on April 1st, so do check that out. Um, but one of the things that um, had come up in it is I, I think the majority of people are looking for more um, embellishments for the junk journals and then a use of book pages and I was really really glad to see that because I struggle as well um, we've all got mountains of book pages left over and so yesterday afternoon I just tried to devote some time to playing around with some ideas and this I've just got a few things that I've come up with um, I've tried to keep them really really simple <laughs> and this is this is one of them. If you wanted, if you've got a large book page, you could um, fold it down, stitch it, do some stamping, and you could turn that either into a tuck spot. Um, let me just get my little journal here to show you. Um, you could put it on the end of a page, and it could be a tuck spot, or you could put it in the center and make it a belly band. So that's a really simple one that we'll make um, because it will also, um, I can show you guys a little bit on stamping, stamping and stenciling because that was another thing people were asking about. So, okay, so that's a super, super easy one. Like I said, I didn't, I tried to do everything that, um, not too complex because I really get frustrated if things are really fiddly and so that's why <laughs> I've opted for these things um, okay so here is a little tag super easy just a circle and then this was a um, little die cut I had or a digital that I had and I put that on but you could use anything you could just use another shape um, so we'll just play around with that um, here is taking a little mini Rolodex um, and then I've stitched each of those separate and stitched them together so that you've got this tiny little pocket did some stamping so that's another little idea that we can go over this one I love this is just a little butterfly uh, dangle and this is taking um, multiple pages we'll get to that and I'll show you how to do it but that you could just have um, you could put a hole in your book page and adhere it that way or um, just tuck it in a pocket, you know. Okay, so these, I'm really, really excited to show you these. <clears throat> and if anybody has done this before, I certainly have never seen these. Um, I did a heart-shaped pocket a long time ago, so if you want to look back... Um, to totally different to this, but what I've done here is um, just multiple layers of book page, and my thinking is you could adhere this whole back. Get my little journal again. Um, you could just adhere this completely, glue it down, and then you've got these as as tiny little tuck spots and you've got both sides I love that I'm so so loving that ran a stitch down the middle if, <coughs> if you didn't have a sewing machine you could probably just well you could just glue each layer but we'll 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 do that we'll do that one and then again um, just another tag I love to do the dimensional butterflies you guys know so that's really simple it's been done before but you know, we just we'll revisit that again. And then here, <clears throat> with the same concept as this one, this would just be hanging in the junk journal. And then you've got the tiny tags. So I love that. Um, and then another th idea I come up with was using the negative um, die cut to form a pocket that you could just glue down. Um, because I still am trying to get organized myself, guys. I um, I'm <clears throat> I tend to do when I'm creating my journals. I do embellishments for that journal. It's very very rare that I do batches of this, for example, because 
I find you guys know my style is so all over the place <laughs> that it it's not beneficial to me to make buku shabby chic because I might be working in nature this this time and so that doesn't work for me but having said that I'm trying <laughs> to change my evil ways <laughs> I am really trying to get um, because I think I would be more efficient this way because you're dragging out so many products so um, it's a learning process for all of us guys so you know don't uh, I'm just here to try to give some ideas take what you can from it and the rest of it you just leave it and say well that ain't for me so um, alright so let's just start with this one it's super easy I don't need I feel funny even doing a tutorial on it but you know um, we'll we'll do it and um, because like I said it will I want to do a bit of stamping because I've had some questions about that so I like my stuff to be pretty sturdy so I tend to use a couple of pages and so I know the size journal I always work in they never exceed um, eight and a quarter in height so um, <clears throat> for me I'm just straight away going to go ahead and cut this down because I know there's no point in me decorating this whole sheet it's just going to get cut off I do like to save these because I think they're kind of kind of cool so I'm just going to take that um, there and then trim off a little bit on the bottom now I will tell you guys because I, I like to machine stitch I am going to have to stop um, and then just oh this is fine um, and then edit the video together because I don't like for you guys to have to listen to that machine going so um, alright so what I'm going to do on this I, I want this to be on the front because I think that was really cool how that came out um, so I'm just going to mess around with folding this over because like I said I want it to be sturdy enough that when it goes into um, I folded that too far um, when it goes into the journal I like them to be kind of weighty um, that's just my my choice I know a lot of people work with just single pages but I feel like it's really flimsy <coughs> and fiddly for myself um, alright so guys it's as easy as that this is two pages that's been folded over um, so it's going to have a really nice weight. I'm just going to run to the machine and stitch it and get my stamps out and I'll be back. Okay guys, I've just run that through the machine. You wouldn't have to do this step, as I said. It can all be glued, but I just um, it's, I just prefer it that way. Um, so now, I've got this script stamp. Use what you've got, obviously, um, you know. We've all got to just make use of what we have. So it's just <coughs> adding a little bit of interest to that. That had been done with a really dark ink. This is um, a light. It's crumb cake from Stampin' Up. Most of you have probably heard of it. It's the color I probably use the most. Um, there's People have asked me well, what you know about the stamping. You can stamp direct on this. It, this isn't going to show as much as something like this, for example. You ink that up, and obviously that's going to stand out. Now, if you ink this up and stamp off first, um, and I've heard somebody yesterday refer to it as second generation stamping. I've never heard that term before. But anyways, I'm getting sidetracked again. Stamp off with your ink once, twice, it's up to you. And then just lightly stamp that. You can see the difference. That's just going straight from the ink pad. And then that's if you stamp off. So, you know, on, on a background, this is what you're going to probably want. But this one... I'm not bothered because it's all so fussy anyways and if you wanted to tone this down you could take some gesso and put on that but I'm not going to do that um, just for time's sake and like I said this is just to try to give you guys some super quick ideas without 
getting too bogged down. Um, <clears throat> don't even need to do that, but I'm trying to take away from that wording is the reason I've opted to put this script on there. I, I want to try to, so you're not seeing those words so much. So <clears throat> I hope that that's answered some question, you know, about when I refer to stamping off. Um, first, it's just applying it to your paper and then to that, and you get a completely different look to it. Um, okay, so um, I think I will switch to a darker ink because I've got these two stamps, and I'm just going to randomly put them on there. Um, I have to tell you guys, see, see how much darker that one is and I, I want these to stand out a little bit more. Yeah, I I tell you, um I struggled, really struggled to try to come up with some ideas for you on um these book pages because <clears throat> there's just not a lot that's new. To do with them. Just run that across there. So there you go. Really simple. It. If I wasn't trying to do a tutorial, you'd have this done in five minutes, really. But there again, I do them in a batch <laughs> because you've drug out all your inks, your stamps. Um, you know, that's going to be the quickest solution for that. So, And that feels much better. See, that one had only been done with one sheet. This one I did two, and I like that much better. So that's one thing. So we've kind of covered the stamping, I hope. Um, another thing I guess I will say, if you're new to stamping, is um, if you've got a small stamp like this, it's easier to stamp, to ink your stamp up this way and then stamp. Large stamps are always easier to take the ink pad to the stamp and go around. It, it's just a little tip, you know. Um, if, you, if you're experienced in stamping, you know that already. So, um, But I'm trying to assume that um, that you've not stamped and hopefully, you know, encourage you to pick up because you can get the stamps really cheap. I know um, sometimes the Dollar Tree will get them in. I don't know about Poundland in the UK because I haven't had the chance to go there much since I've been back. Um, but you can you can pick them up cheap and also um, if you're starting out guys check your Facebook marketplace in your you know your area because a lot of people get into this stuff and it's not their thing, and they, they'll give them, you know, they'll sell them really cheap. So that's another place you can look. Okay, this one, I'm going to go ahead and do this one. Um, unfortunately, a lot of this is going to have to be, um, well, I'll tell you what, I'll bring the big shot over. It's going to be awkward, but I'll bring it over and cut these so you guys can see what I'm doing. I still haven't gotten um, my space so that you guys could see a bit better. <clears throat> oh gosh, I hope I can do this, guys. I'll try. Um, we'll do the large one. And this is the one that I thought would be awesome to... Um, to glue down in the journal. So what I did here, because these pages um, are kind of thin, I think I put three sheets. And I've got them here. Let me make sure I've got three. It's just two. Let me grab another one. I really hope you guys can see this. Um, all I'm going to do is just run these through the Big Shot and 
cut out, you'd need these uh, framelits to do this. I should have mentioned that. Um, and you're going to need three sizes of this. <clears throat> but you'll do two sizes in the book page and then we'll come back and we'll do a, a scrapbook paper out of that the smallest one there. Um, well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to... Uh, let me cut this. Oh, goodness. I think last night, it was late when I was doing this, I think last night what I ended up doing was taking two and folding it over. Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> it was late, so... Okay, so anyways, I'm going to put that there. And I'll just run these through single. Sorry guys, I'm really trying not to bump this camera. And then we'll do, oh yeah, this is what I noticed last night. Make sure you got these, um, your words in the direction that you want. Because that's what it was. Last night I had tried to run them through together and I ended up with um, some of the words were upside down to fit those, both of those on. So that wasn't great. So here's what we've got. This is the large one. And when you run those through the big shot, they will pretty much stay together because it's, you know, it's so snug going through there. So that's great because as long as you can keep those together, you're just going to run either a bead of glue or a stitch down there. But let's go ahead now and get that third one cut out of some scrapbook paper. Just grab what's handy. Um, I tell you what I found out last night, and I'm gonna have to start being aware of this. Um, you know, I had that bit of a cold, and I got over. You know, it really kind of hit me hard over the weekend. I told you I just didn't feel great. Um, so I just took the weekend off and kind of rested. Well, last night I was in here, and I know if I work late at night, sometimes I can tell I'm not 100%. Um, but it was interesting. I dug out all these books because it's really bugging me. I've got um, all these old books, and I just... I don't know, stuff kind of compounds and I, I start feeling like I have to have a spring clean. It's in, just in my nature. So I got these books out, started working with these book pages, and now my chest is tightening up. Um, I feel like I'm starting to get this raspy voice again. So I don't know. Wouldn't it be awful if I find out that I've got Maybe an allergy to these old book pages. I know I've heard people um, say that you can, um, that they can carry mold. Oh, Lord forbid. I really hope that's not the case, guys. But it's too much of a coincidence for me to just dismiss. So, um, so I don't know. You guys let me know if any of you have experienced that. But I, it's definitely making me think that this weekend <coughs> I'm going to have to... Um, <clears throat> this weekend I'm going to have to um, do a big clear out and see if I can get, maybe it's just dusty in here. But anyways, I'm rambling on again. I'm sorry, guys. I got that cut out. and Look at that. Can't you just see that in a, um, in a journal? Let me run to the machine. I'll be right back. 
Hey guys, there we go. Uh, I had a little bit of a mishap with the sewing machine, but anyways, it's it's all good. So what you'll what you'll discover with this, and if this bothers you, you'll want to do this, and I should have thought of it sooner. If you don't glue those layers together, you're going to end up, you know. So if you if it bothers you that it's like that, just slap a little bit of glue between and that'll give you three definite layers. I'm not bothered about it because sometimes I, you know how I like to touch stuff so um, so I'm not too bothered about that. Um, let me get to a page here. Oh I think that's going to be so pretty. Um, and then like I said you've got that bottom glued there and how cute is that going to be because it it'll hold those it you know you've got that and it just oh i think that's so sweet happy with that so that's um two ideas guys let's see what else we can get through that sorted that one out um we did our little stamping project um <clears throat> you guys know and i'm not going to demo this but the other really basic one, everybody's done these, <clears throat> is just take your book page and fold that up and then fold this one down. And then I rounded the corners there and then I dropped this back down so that it would be more of a, um, you know, A pocket that you could see <coughs> what you tucked in and then I just ran the the stitch down the side there um, my problem with these and it's always been a, a problem with um, with crafters is the wording and I'll tell you I've followed um, so many tutorials and there are some great ladies out there that are good with book pages but it's so fiddly it's not my thing so what I sometimes we'll do is just go ahead and do these. I just stick them to the side and then when I get ready I can cover them up and let me show you what I mean. And this is covering it up to extreme because you could decoupage them. But um, here I just took you know our off cups of the um, tea stained papers and I just came back over to cover that and I like it because it's really uh, rustic so I'm really happy with how that's come out. So that's another really simple couple of um, envelopes. You could either, that one you could have as a floating envelope. This one you could glue down on your page if you wanted to do that. <clears throat> and you can always decoupage them. You, you know, you, you can go as far as you want with them. Um, let's make this one. This I love. I love to put these in my journal. And if you if you bought from me, you know it, yours may have had these in there. Um, these are music sheet pockets that I like to sew into the signature. So let's make that. Uh, what you're going to need is <clears throat> some music sheet. I like to double those up again, even on those, um, because I like them to be really sturdy. Because people are putting, you know, they're in and out of it. They're going to be handling it a lot. So, um, <clears throat> so anyways, get your music sheet cut down to what you know is going to fit in your journal. I know this one's going to fit in in the ones that I work in. And then what I'm going to do is run this through the machine all along the edges but before I do that round your corners because it just makes it look a little bit nicer this is the world's worst corner punch and I don't even know how I ended up with it but I've never upgraded but it is so terrible it um I guess you gotta be the incredible hulk to even push the thing down 
luckily I've got some strength today, so I was okay. All right, so we're going to stitch this first layer, and then we'll I'll be. Okay, guys, I've uh, been to the machine, did that stitching around there, so you can see that. I folded it so that I know what my center is, although you, you don't have to do that. <laughs> I just realized you really don't need to do that. Um, okay, so now what I've done is I've come back with two more sheets of paper, and I think I've probably taken off about uh, half of an inch. And I'm not going to worry about taking anything off the length. If you want to do that, feel free to. Um, the reason I'm not is I folded the extra length back down. So just um, line this up, bring this back down on itself, and take your bone folder, and then let's do the same on this end. Kind of want to make sure they're about the same. Okay, done that. I'm going to round those corners again if my little thing will work. Oh, see? See? He's starting to act up again. I've got the uh, memory board, but I don't, sometimes it's just easy just to try to use this crazy thing. I must get me a better one. Okay, so what I decided is these are kind of cool to just have as, as another tuck spot because what you're going to do is um, you can either sew this in the center of your signature or anywhere within the signature but you you know that way you, when it comes in you could have a little tuck spot there, but you don't have to do that. I just opted to leave it open so you could shove a few more things in. Um, but if you don't like that, then what you would want to do is go to your machine, stitch that down first so that it's completely flat. But I'm going to do this all in one go because I'm happy to have a little tuck spot there. Um, so what you'll do, take this over, center it up, and then Go to your machine and run a straight stitch all the way across. And I, what I always do is just, you know, do a reverse stitch right there because that's going to take the most um, strain. So I just reverse stitch it right at the edges there and then a straight stitch down. I'll be right back. Okay, guys, I'm back and I ended up going ahead just so I could show you guys. I went ahead and stitched those down first um, so that you could see the difference. Um, and it is nice. It is really, really nice. But here, then obviously you could just tuck something in. So totally, you know, just take the idea, make it your own. Um, get these ready. Oh, I do like, I like. I like these in my journal, and they are so sturdy. Um, they have a really nice weight to them. They feel good, and um, you know you're not going to have to worry. Oh, it's so fragile that it's going to tear. So I like that. So, anyways, there's another idea. Um, so I think that's where I'm going to stop today, guys, because um, that's given you quite a few things and I've got other stuff I need to get on with but I might come back um, well this I can just really explain I, we, you guys saw the concept for this one all you do differently is just put you a little bit of um, thread uh, twine uh, ah, linen thread through there gosh yeah or baker's twine that's what I was I was trying to say. So that's the only difference with that one. Um, and then here, just cut, I cut out, <coughs> there's six layers of, of book page, and then I did them in two batches of three, and then I stuck this um, 
twine through the center, did the zigzag stitch down it, added a little bead, and so that's ready to go. And then these, you're just going to put about three layers of that. So really, guys, I think that's going to be it for the book pages. Um, I'm hoping that that's giving you some ideas. Um, we've got these little ones. Same thing with the butterfly, just do a couple of layers. Um, and then this one is just a negative cutout. So you're going to take three, I think this one I took three book pages and uh, cut out the heart and then placed some cardstock, be, be, um, yeah, this craft cardstock between it and backed it with another bunch of book pages. So, you know, they're, they, it's just little ideas that I tried to come up with that I'm hoping you know will make you um, think about how you could use these book pages in your journal and you know I'm hoping it will um, motivate you to start thinking some ideas that you can share with the rest of us because we have all got oh, I don't wouldn't even want to guess how many pages are sitting in here and i got to get busy making stuff, otherwise they're going to have to go because I, I am starting to wonder about the dust in here. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for stopping by. Be sure and um, like this video and hit the bell so that you can get future notifications from me and join the giveaway, guys. Um, so thanks a lot. I'll see you guys here soon. Bye.